Um, so for any of you that have just joined us, please do say hello from wherever you are in our chat box. Um, kia ora, tēnā koutou katoa. Hello and greetings to you all from uh, New Zealand. Uh, my name is Dr Sarah Thomas and I'll be your host um, for today's webinar um, and for the, the rest of the webinars in this series. So before we begin, um, just some housekeeping notices. So please be aware that this webinar is being recorded and the uh, recording will be posted on the ISAD YouTube channel. So by staying and participating, you are consenting to being part of this recording. And hello to all the viewers on our ISAD uh, YouTube channel who are watching late, later. So um, please use the chat box, the Q&A box to ask questions. If you have a question for a specific presenter, then please do pop their name against the question. Um, we do have some polls that we're going to go through and we're going to start uh, with our first poll to get us warmed up. Uh, so Kim, who is um, our tech elf today, she's going to pop that poll up. You're going to get one minute. Please just pop your answer in that poll. For those of you who are watching from home, you might not see the poll um, on, on you, the YouTube channel. You might not see it. So we're asking people what their IZD membership level is. And we're also asking them where they learnt about this webinar. So did they learn, it, uh, learn about it from social media, from the IZD website or from email? OK, Kim, we're going to close that poll. And let's look at the results. So we have nearly 40 percent are institutional members and 34 percent individual members. Got a few who are non-members. Um, hopefully you'll be members soon. And um, the place where most people found out about the webinar first was the IZA email and then was the, the social media um, and also uh, from a colleague was very popular too. So thanks, Kim. We're going to close that out and then we're going to get started. So just to um, go through the, the running format for today, um, each of the webinars in the series will focus on a, a different chapter. So we've got eight chapters that are in the World Sea and Aquarium Conservation Education Strategy. Today is all about chapter one, building a culture of conservation education. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you a bit of background, um, a quick overview of that chapter and the recommendations. Uh, then we're gonna hear from our, our guest speakers. So um, first we're gonna have Nicola from the Ocean Conservation Trust. Good evening, Nicola. Um, and then we're going to hear from Laura, uh, from Fundacion uh, Tamaican in uh, Argentina. Good afternoon, uh, Laura. Um, and then we're all going to come together in a panel um, joined by Dr. Judy Mann, who is president-elect of the IZD board. So I really do want you to think of some questions for any of our panelists over the next 20 minutes, because we'll have plenty of time to have that great conversation um, um, then. So um, as a note to myself and to all the speakers, um, we do have an international audience, so please be mindful of the pace um, of your presentations. Um, and so we make sure that everybody can understand. If any of our audiences think we're going a bit too quick, please just pop that in the chat box so we can uh, make sure we know that. Before you, you see my slides, um, here is our next uh, poll. We've got a couple of questions. So the strategy recommends your organization have a written conservation education plan. Um, where are you at with that plan? And there's a couple of responses. And question two, it says, what stage are you at at implementing the World Zoo and Aquarium Conservation Education Strategy? And then there's a couple of responses for that. So I'll give you a minute and you can think about those two questions. So the first question asked about the conservation education plan. And by far, well, actually, we've got a couple of um, uh, responses that are both around um, one is 39%, one is 37%. So a good chunk of you have a written conservation education plan that partially meets this recommendation. Uh, and 37% of you saying, no, we don't have a written conservation education plan. So that's really useful for, for us and the ISAD board to understand where our audience are at. And then um, what stage are you at, at implementing the conservation education strategy? Let's see what we have for those um, responses. So by far the, the bigger res response saying, I've not read the strategy, but I'm attending this webinar as the first step to learn about what it's all about. So you are in the right place 
we are going to um, today and um, through the next um, eight webinars, we're going to talk you through um, the uh, strategy and to help you and your understanding. So um, we know that this is for some of you the first time that you're hearing about the World Zoo and Aquarium Conservation Education Strategy. And I'm delighted that you're joining us to learn more about this, this global document that was launched in October 2020 to give you an idea of um, just what it took to, to make the document. Um, there was 180 institutions, 350 people from um, 43 countries. Um, so it was a really big endeavor. And the idea was having the first unified document to really think about conservation education um, and thinking about the recommendations for good practice. So um, the the contents that you can see, it's split into three sections. You don't need to see um, uh, what it says in each bit, but the first bit um, is the outline, the executive summary, the recommendations. There's an introduction section, which really lays out um, the kind of global context of why we do need this conservation education strategy. The chapters are the main portion. There are eight um, in total. Um, and then lastly, there is an appendix at the end that has a bibliography. So some great um, resources for you to look at. It has a um, different a glossary of terms and it also um, highlights all the different contributing organizations that were involved in there. The last thing which I do think is a very useful tool if you're kind of engaging with the strategy for the first time. On the very last two pages is the um, recommendation self audit checklist, which means that you can go through all the 22 recommendations of good practice and actually see where you are at the moment. So I think that's a really great step that you can take. So the first um, chapter, and we're gonna focus on that today, is building a culture for conservation education. Um, and what I want to do is um, highlight a, a page that comes just before that, which talks about the terminology that we use. Because when we're starting to think about a culture of conservation education, we really do need to think about what terms, what phrases, what kind of breadth and scope we have for our, um, for our kind of industry. So this really lays out the decisions we've made to use the phrase conservation education to reflect that biodiversity uh, conservation is at the heart of all that we should do. It also has a note about the word audiences. So this moves away from the traditions of just zoo visitors, so people who come to our zoos, and also acknowledges all our online audiences, all our community outreach, and really kind of acknowledges that breadth of conservation education that's connected to our zoos and aquariums now. It also acknowledges species, so both animals and plants are in our kind of remit, um, and really thinks about um, making sure that we include zoos and aquariums equally in the kinds of work and the recommendations that we want to put forward. So when we think about um, building a culture for conservation education, why would we do that? And it really acknowledges to me that um, we're moving away from the days that education was done in formal sessions in classrooms alone. It really says that actually, if we want to be um, modern conservation organizations, we have to have um, it is a whole organization endeavor. It needs every single person from the director through to the people who work in retail and everybody in between to feel that they're part of that conservation education uh, journey. So the, this slide talks about the recommendations. So we have five recommendations in this chapter um, and it, it talks about how um, that first one says that we should have conservation education as part of our written mission statement. And that really means that is a clear signal to everybody. So that is the staff, the volunteers, your external funders, that you are a conservation education organization. That's really a big part and a really kind of headline of who you are and what you do. The next two, as we've looked at a bit about in our poll, is a conservation education plan. Now, the reason why we've got a couple of um, recommendations in there around that is to really try to move our zoo and aquarium community to a systematic approach to thinking about that organizational wide conservation education. It means that there's more um, uh, idea around quality, accountability, consistency in the messaging that, that we're trying to kind of put in. How do we link to um, external frameworks? How do we link to our mission and vision? And how do we make sure that we can really say, um, not just for today and tomorrow, but long term, what is our purpose around our education and our conservation uh, piece? 
And then the last um, couple talk about um, things that go beyond programming. Um, so you think about the what is appropriate facilities. And I always think about two very contrasting places I've been to. Um, I've been to the uh, Align Zoo in the United Arab Emirates, where they had a multi-million dollar education facility. Um, but I've also been to Norden Zark in Sweden, where their education facilities are dens in the forest. And they're both appropriate for conservation education. But it, it's trying to signal that we have a recommendation saying we have to go beyond and look at different places and spaces within our zoos and aquariums to make sure that we deliver the quality conservation education that we desire. And the last one in this chapter talks about um, exhibit design specifically, but also kind of signals to uh, interpretation planning, collection planning, and saying how do we bring our knowledge and expertise as educators into different parts of our organization as we're trying to uh, progress our zoos and aquariums as modern zoos and aquariums. So making sure that we have a seat at the table, making sure that we can get our messages in there, into those new habitats, into those new kind of um, spaces in our organizations. But we know that there are challenges ahead. And I, I think that um, in each of the chapters, if you have a look, um, there is a couple of pages which talks about the, the main themes, but it really talks um, and, and uh, acknowledges that this is not an easy thing. So, you know, when we say building a culture for conservation education, the, the, as the first cartoon said, there's not a miracle that, that happens. There is lots of hard work that goes into building that culture and building that new kind of environment we want to do. We also acknowledge um, that, you know, we may have a plan, we may have a world zoo and aquarium conservation education strategy, but we also acknowledge that they, the path that most people are going to uh, go on to get there is going to be varied. We know that people are at different stages. We know that there is lots of, you know, people um, right now at the beginning saying, where do I start? And this is what these webinars, these professional development sessions are for, to really help you get along um, the, the different stages of your journey. Um, and we also um, want to kind of make sure that we support um, uh, each, you, each of you with each step of the, the plan. So making sure that um, IZE puts in the training, the support, uh, and the connections to make sure that you're, you don't feel that you're alone on this kind of exciting journey with this new global strategy. Um, so here's my contact details um, and um, uh, what I would like you to think about is the last few slides have given an overview of the strategy um, in a, a bit of a whistle stop tour. Um, one of the first things if you're new to the strategy is have a read of, of chapter one over the next few days. Think about where you're at, think about the kind of challenges you might face and think about the things that you might do as a first step. OK, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen there. Um, and then we are going to go over to our uh, first speaker, who is Nicola from uh, the Ocean Conservation uh, Trust. Um, just as a reminder before we get going, if you've got any questions for Nicola, uh, myself or Laura or Judy, then please put it in the Q&A section and we'll collate those going forward. So uh, good morning, no, good evening, Nicola um, from the UK. So Nicola is the head of conservation education and communication, and she does all sorts of brilliant other stuff as part of her day job. She's the chair of the conservation education committee for BIASA, the British and Irish Association of Zoos and Aquariums, and also the current president of the European Marine Science Educators Association. So good morning, Madam President, welcome. Over to you, you have 10 minutes uh, and I'll let you share your screen. Thank you, I will try to stick to 10 minutes. And I must say the president word, that, that is, it's, it's a little bit embarrassing. Um, but yes, hello everybody. It's really nice to see you, well, not see you, but know that you're there in the ether in front of me this evening. Um, so let's do a little bit of screen sharing. Can we all see that? Yes, so um, as Sarah said, uh, I'm Head of Conservation Education and Communications for the Ocean Conservation Trust um, and we um, run the National Marine Aquarium, which is a charitable aquarium based in the UK. Um, it's been around for 21 years and it was the first aquarium in the UK to be opened as a charity um, with the mission of, of conservation, education and research. So. Um, I do sort of need to qualify maybe some of the things that I'm about to say in that I am quite lucky 
that the vision of the people that opened the place where I, I work now was for it to be an education establishment. So I think I am lucky. However, it's not been easy. And uh, I'll talk you through sort of the current work that we do. But then at the end, I'll just tell you some of the challenges that uh, I've faced and maybe some of you guys are facing now. Um, and then maybe some of my little tips on um, how you can meet those challenges and definitely how you can use the strategy that Sarah's just outlined to help you to do that. Um, so I've been in this industry for 16 years now. Um, my whole life really is around the ocean and, and helping people to, to love the ocean. But probably 16 years ago, what I would have said is I want to educate people about the ocean. I want people to know about the ocean. Um, but I must say in recent years that that um, impetus behind the knowing people must know what I know really has changed. Uh, so, so let's just explain a little bit of that. Um, so I always like to include our, our pink donut logo there. It's not just a donut. It is actually uh, planet Earth. Um, the pink bit uh, being the ocean and the white bit being the land. So that kind of it describes to you a little bit about uh, what that is. Um, so as the, the Ocean Conservation Trust, as I said, we run the National Marine Aquarium um, and we have two focuses. Uh, one is behavior change in our conservation programs, and the other one is kind of the more uh, traditional type of conservation as in habitat restoration and management. But luckily, as a senior management team and all the way trickled through the organization, we have embedded um, the idea that really conservation is behavior. And if you are looking after a species, an animal or a habitat, if you're not working with local communities and the wider, broader public, then really is the work that you're doing, what are you doing? What are you doing that for? Because you could put that animal back, you could replant that forest, you could put seagrass back in the sea. But if you haven't worked with the wider public, if you haven't engaged them in that habitat, um, really what, what are you doing? Are you just doing it for yourself to make you feel good while you're alive on this planet? And I know that's a bit controversial, but... Um, we, we really do think about that. Um, so the aquarium is definitely our flagship. It's our, our base and it's where we do um, our engagement work. Um, and our engagement work, when I say engagement, I mean education, I mean community work, I mean tours and talks and shows and VIP activities and boat trips and snorkeling. Um, so when I say engagement, I guess I'm really talking about, about our whole programme. Um, but what uh, we have done is really focused on um, coming up with a framework and a plan because uh, we felt that if we didn't have a plan, really, again, what are, what are we doing? What's our goal? What's our aim? Why, why are we telling people about sharks? And why, you know, why are we doing really fun talks about clownfish? What's, what's the point? What, what is it that we want to, to happen? Um, is it just that we want to impart knowledge onto people, put knowledge into people's heads and just they walk away with that knowledge in their head? Um, no, we want to do more than that. And that's the wonderful thing about the strategy. It really helps to sort of think think it through that we're not just knowledge machines. We're not here, we have knowledge and I have to give that knowledge to someone else. It's, it's, it's that bigger thing. So this is our pathway, very simple um, for, the, for the purposes of this presentation, but if you want any more information, just let me know. Um, so if we think of one individual, let's make it really easy. What we want is that an individual that interacts with the Ocean Conservation Trust we want them to experience the ocean. We want them to do something. We want them to participate. So that could be a school child. It could be a member of a community group. It could be walking around the aquarium on a day out. Um, but we want them to, to feel something, to do something, not just to be a passive kind of person that absorbs knowledge. Um, so next, once, once we've got that feeling happening and, and that that engagement in that way um, the pathways are open then for a bit more of the kind of the knowledge side of things so discovery and, and learning um, and then if we can get those two things right if we can look at how we can help people to do and feel 
um, if we can look at how, what it is that we want people to learn and understand, um, then we, we think that that's a, a better basis for that connection to happen and then the behaviour change that we want. So that behaviour change might be something to do with eating sustainable seafood, it might be something to do with using less, less electricity in terms of carbon footprint. Um, but all the time, we're thinking about the habitats, we're thinking about the animals, and we're thinking about the ways that those habitats and animals can inspire and engage and create awe in people so that they're enjoying the experience, they're enjoying the boat trip, they're enjoying the school lesson. So then they're more likely to want to learn, they want to find out more, um, so that then those two bits, again, might, might uh, lead to the behaviour change. Um, but previously, in previous years, our pathway started with knowledge. So the discover and learn in the middle was at the top. So we thought if we if we told people things and made them have knowledge, then they'd want to experience and participate and do something and connect and act. But with you know the most recent research that's out there about nature connectedness and all of the stuff that you'll read in the strategy, we changed our framework. So I think that's an important thing: being prepared to change what you think you know. Um, so that's our a strategy. And then the, the arrow there kind of shows that the, that individual can keep going round and round. So more behaviours, more experiences, more facts in terms of learning. Um, another in, important thing that I wanted to include here is, is how we design our sessions, whether that's for a policymaker, a business, a school. It's got to be fun. It's got to be learning from science learning from people, real inspirational, exciting people that aren't necessarily a scientist. They could be an artist, they could be a geographer, they could just be a local person that just loves the sea and is just really enthusiastic and loves lobsters and wants to tell people about sustainable lobster fishing um, and learning from experience again. And um, so those four things really help my team when they're coming up with something new. Okay, what's the pathway? What do we want them to do? What do we want them to learn? What are the facts we want them to learn? And what is the behavior that we want? And then how do we make it fun? How do we make sure it's scientific? And how, how are we good ambassadors uh, in this experiential experience? Um, so just a, a couple more quick slides. Again, it's kind of going through what I just said there, but our, our, our program, our frame, we really want to encourage a physical and emotional connection with the ocean, knowing that knowledge is important, but it's not enough on its own to cause people to take action to benefit nature. And you will see that in the strategy. <laughs> Um, and then connected us to nature is a strong predictor of positive conservation behaviour. So sometimes you can create a session, a workshop, a tour that's just about having fun and putting your feet in the sand or spotting a bird in a tree. And there doesn't have to be any facts linked with it at all. It's just doing it. The doing it is the exciting thing. Um, oh, and there's some lovely photos there of us doing our thing in the sea and in the aquarium and sitting on the floor with a turtle shell. Um, promoting pro-ocean behaviour, it's still incredible to me um, that people don't know how to be sustainable and then I have to remember that I live and breathe it. So let's not be condescending, let's promote these behaviours that are good, helping people to understand that they can't do everything, um, but always in, in that um, goal, your end goal needs to be thinking about what, what are the behaviours that, that we want and people want to know how they can help. And there's some more nice photos of us promoting pro-ocean pro behaviour there. And then being optimistic, um, I think we've had a brilliant conversation, my team and I today, about sea spiracy. I won't go in, get into that now. Wow, what a can of worms. Things that we knew, things that surprised us even as hardened marine conservationists, but we still need to be optimistic. You know, somebody could walk into your zoo tomorrow that's got no idea um, about um, the problems facing the natural world or might have a very strong idea about the problems facing the natural world. So it's our responsibility to, to help them to know that there is still hope because without hope, you know, we, we really are in trouble. And there's some more lovely photographs. Um, another frame that we use is this uh, WAVES framework. Um, you can look that up, WAVES framework. If you put WAVES framework ocean into the internet, you'll find that. And it just helps us to think not really about what we're going to say but but how we're going to say it um, and I know I'm probably running out of time so I'm going to skip that because I want to get down to the other bit um evaluation because of this clear pathway because of knowing how and what we're going to say and the way that we're going to say it that helps us to evaluate and we we still use something called generic learning outcomes 
and each of those um, levels of the pathway there can be um, evaluated lo using lots of different techniques. So challenges, how do you embed conservation education into an organization that you know might just be really far away from from that at the moment and, and you know it's things like it's too expensive we haven't got a plan there's no support from those above us evaluation is really confusing the staff lack skills it's time consuming education isn't conservation Ooh, isn't it annoying when people say that um so to counter that Here's my getting it sorted slide. <laughs> uh, and I need to move that because I can't see it. I've, I've got myself, my own face is in the way. There we go. Um, so just with evaluation, ask for help. There's so many cool people out there that can do evaluation. Sarah's one. I'm, I'm all right. You can email me now. Look at the strategy. Type evaluation into Google and you'll get, you'll get results. And start simple. There's nothing better than doing a piece of evaluation evaluation which is did you have a nice time and then put your hand up if you did that is evaluation very simple but you've done some evaluation you know half of the people in your group had a fun time get some confidence and then build up and then there's all sorts there's there's loads that you can do from computerized to forms to everything so start simple ask for help there's loads of it out there um money look for funding it's difficult but I think as Sarah showed that bumpy road of conservation education, don't do this job <laughs> if you want a nine to five Monday to Friday job. You'll probably have to be looking for funding in, in you know, annoying times of the day, fitting it into other things. Um, but, it, but it is out there. Um, if you haven't got a plan, the strategy is certainly going to help you to make a plan. And if you feel that you haven't got the support from above, just one try minute, Nicola. Okay, I'm nearly there, I'm nearly there. Try, just try doing it yourself. Try doing it at night. Go home and sit there and think, what is my plan going to be? Um, who is going to do my plan? What's it going to be? Why? How many of whatever it is that I'm going to do? Um, and if you get those just really simple words down on a piece of paper, it really starts to help. And of course, there's lots of examples in the strategy. Um, remember that your CEO is a person too. Get to know them. Buy them chocolate, wine, beer, say nice things about their children or pets. I did that. My CEO loves me. He's great. Hello, Roger, if you're listening. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they are a person too. So you never know if you're friendly, maybe they'll be friendly back. Um, education isn't conservation. Yes, it is. And this strategy shows that it is. There are billions of people on this planet. And if we don't help them to change their behavior by an amazing programs of engagement, then whatever we do to help the natural world, however many animals we put back or things we plant, that it's not going to work. So it is conservation. So look at the global initiatives, the UN Decade of the Ocean, the UN Decade of Habitat Restoration, link your education to that, and, and that shows that it is um, education, uh, uh, conservation. Um, and also there's loads of free training. You're in some free training now. So if your staff are feeling that they haven't got the skills, just look for it. Join IZE, BIAZA, WAZA, um, and there's, there's loads of opportunities out there. Um, so that's me, uh, and I spoke too fast because, as usual, I tried <clears> to fit in. Um, but I'm <clears> so I hope I hope that helped in a, in a way. Please ask me questions. Thank you so much, Nicola. Um, I know one question that people will have is, uh, can they see your presentation? Could you put a link in the chat to to see that? Can you um, share that for for them to have a look through later on, if possible? Yes. Um, yes, yes. And also your contact details as well, because I know lots of people might want to contact you to have further conversations. Uh, for our audience uh, now, if you do have some questions for Nicola, um, please put those in our Q&A uh, box. We're going to move over now to our next speaker. Nicola, if you want to just stop sharing your screen, um, we can then move over to our next speaker, who is Laura um, Schifrin from uh, Fundation Tamaiken. All the way, uh, we're going to go across the world now to Patagonia. Uh, good afternoon, Laura. Hello to everybody. Thank you, Sarah, for inviting us to share the, our little uh, experience in, uh, in, in sharing or in mixing our own plan with the uh, new strategy. So I, I start sharing. Well, first of all, um, Excuse me for my English. I, I prepare a traditional PowerPoint, the slides, 
in order to uh, um, to be uh, to be uh, the, the best in my English and uh, to communicate what we are going to share this uh, this afternoon in this Zoom or um, um, we start uh, having a, a very good surprise with the process to participate in the process of the strategy because um, when we receive the the first um, uh, I don't remember how to say borrador the first the preliminary one the draft yes uh, we start uh, feeling very, very happy because we found a lot of things, ideas, uh, knowledge, uh, um, um, access that we believe some of them that we uh, concrete in our daily actions and some of them, uh, those we have as, uh, as, a, as a dream as a north uh, towards we want to continue our uh, our um, our walk <laughs> uh, so uh, the first uh, in the first chapter building a culture of conservation education our our slogan is inside first so um, our first steps First, we participate in the in the strategy process that uh, was by Sara. Then, when we receive first, we translate it in because um, in the educational educational team, only three of the uh, eight people speak in English, so we have to translate and we have an internal version. Then the first things uh, we did was to use the recommendation checklist. Uh, we did it with all the, in, in Google Docs, we pre, uh, prepare the checklist and we share inside the educational team. And this was the first reflection, the, the first step to reflect how our mission, how the things we have already uh, wrote and written in our plan and some of that ideas we uh, have implemented, um, we, uh, we have um, the, the information or the, we, we have already collect the data. We realized that we have a very few uh, measurable indicators and nearly no uh, uh, collect. So we have a very few data of our own uh, process in the different educational progress process. Um, then uh, we uh, start the, the dialogue inside with different areas. And also we, um, I, I, I belong to the education committee of ALTSA, the regional Latin America association of zoo and aquariums. And we have a little conversation about the need to translate the, 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 the whole uh, strategy in order to uh, share with others SUS and, and to, to start also sharing the, the learnings and also the need uh, that, we, that we have, uh, the same needs that we have all together. Then um, we start asking for help to Martin Sordan uh, and also to Sara. And the great, the great question is, uh, the great deficit is how to improve our measurable uh, process. Because uh, we feel that we, we are applying a lot of things that are in the uh, strategy recommendations, 
but we have a very less tools and strategies to collect, to analyze, to evaluate, and then to, uh, to, to do better. Um, our main goals in, in this new, well, we, we have a, a written plan, but in the moment, the um, uh, Gabi Gurner, that is the uh, new uh, education di uh, director, um, we start um, we start taking again some concepts, some education concepts that we uh, we want to be the 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 main goal. So, and here we uh, uh, wrote and we describe the process: information, sensibilization, promotion of awareness, and citizen commitment. This uh, was inspiring us, but it uh, we haven't written them. So the new, uh, the good news is that now we have this written in the plan. Then the three main goals inspire people to take direct and indirect action. But the next one is the more important for this chapter is uh, that inside our organization, we uh, lead by the exam by example. So we we um, uh, really make changes in our individual uh, behavior, in the team's behavior, and in the whole behavior of our organization. So that's the our new slogan, or what the educational team wants to. Um, to go through all the organization. Um, then, how to do this? It is essential that the leaders of the organization recognize this as the very important thing that goes transverse through all the organization. Another thing, the leaders promote social change that, that uh, they really not only believe, but to change um, uh, the, the, the processes or the strategies in their own um, plans. Uh, so uh, we, uh, since, as a synthesis, we say we all of us may be change makers. Uh, and then to be coherent, to, to uh, have coherence to do this, that the culture may, uh, may um, go in this, in this orientation. So- Laura, you have three minutes left. Oh, build a culture of conservation <laughs> education inside the first. So we review some responsibility environmental program and we are implementation or trying to implement the ASA Green Guide and the WASA Sustainability Strategy. Then optimize training professional development in conservation education and then apply to appropriate approach and methods in conservation education. And how are we going to demonstrate these steps? You think appropriate methods to collect, analyze, and share the evidence to demonstrate this and to design and implement inclusive process and programs. Uh, we have um, specific programs with people with disabilities and specific programs with public education that uh, it's a, a shame for me, but in our country, the public uh, education is, um, is uh, a, a poor people attend. I don't know how to say in a proper way, excuse me, but uh, poor families send their uh, children to public schools. They are not 
good as uh, it were uh, very a lot of years ago. And so uh, the inclusive program nowadays is with these audiences, but we when we want that this uh, have a lot of different uh, or the diversity. So the most important things I want to share is that uh, it was, um, we feel that this strategy uh, um, uh, um, I don't know how to say uh, respaldo. It, it, uh, Martin, how can you help me? I, how can I say to it, it as a support? Thank you so much, Sara. So it was a, a great support to all the things we, we, uh, in we believe. And sometimes, like the education process or conservation process, are soft and they have no uh, um, uh, concrete indicators, it's uh, difficult to us to show inside the organization. So we are very happy with the strategy now. And as ICE tells, and as WASA tells, so now we have more support to uh, go with these changes inside the organization. <laughs> Thank you so much, Laura. Thank that you. That was so fantastic. Um, yes. The next section that we have um, is um, with our panelists. So we have Nicola, we have Laura, and then we also have Dr. Judy Mann, who's joining us. Um, we uh, do have a couple of questions already uh, in our Q and A section, but um, please do think of some questions um, for the next uh, 10, 15 minutes. So. Here's one uh, from Martin Zodan. It says, uh, it'd be great to hear from the speakers how they think and hope that conservation education and zoos and aquariums will evolve during the next decade. So we haven't heard from Judy. Um, so maybe Judy, just to put you on the spot, um, if you can unmute yourself, how do you think or hope that conservation education um, will evolve over the next decade? Ooh, thanks, Martine, and thank you, Sarah, for that question. I think that it's something that we are all, all grappling with at the moment, and I think that the last year has been a very interesting year for education, because on the one hand, I think that we have become more relevant than ever before, and on the other hand, if you think of the first people that have been let go from zoos and aquariums, it has been the educators. So I think that we're in a difficult place right now, but I think that ultimately what's going to come out of this is really the importance of, of education. And I loved our presentation, the first presentation, where Nicholas spoke about the fact that unless we can affect change amongst people, amongst our audiences, a lot of what we do is not going to make any difference. And I think that there is going to be an increasing realization of the importance of the role of education. But I think that that needs to become at a balance with the mm. importance of looking after the animals, which is a fundamental animal welfare. Looking after the animals is absolutely critical. But if we can't look after those animals in order to inspire people, why are we looking after those animals? We've got to keep our field conservation going and we've got to keep our conservation education work going. So Martine, mm. my answer to that is that I see conservation education increasing. In the last 15 years, I've watched conservation education increase from something that was done by a few passionate teachers with the kids in the classroom to something that is now considered core. The fact that we produced the strategy just shows how integral it is to our work across the board. So we've mm. really made enormous strides in the last 20 years. And I think that that is only going to increase. Thank you so much for that, and that answer. It's a big question. Um, but I think it's a really important one that we we're trying to answer with, with the strategy uh, going forward. OK, so, um, Laura, a question for you, um, thinking about yourself um, as a Latin American zoo. Um, can you give some uh, comments and, and tips to your fellow Latin American IZE members and zoos and aquariums about how how applicable this strategy is for the 
the Latin American group. And you also are on mute at the moment. You might need to unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think that is a, a very, very good tool because the recommendations, um, they are very um, coherent with uh, some um, axes that we have in uh, the traditional Latin America social education. We said uh, not the education at school, but all the uh, different uh, situations of, educa of, of education in, um, we say non-formal education, but which uh, we can experience in the zoo or in the natural reserve or in the community that are surroundings our facilities. Um, I, I, um, one of the great deficits, sometimes we have no written plan. And I saw in the first question that uh, a, a lot of us haven't yet a written plan. So mm. that uh, I, I, mm. I feel that the recommendations helps help to, uh, to write the actions that we already, that we are already doing, the processes, the programs, and then to measure. I feel that the, the last part of the, the, the last chapter is how to collect and how to uh, decide, decide in the moment of planification, uh, which, uh, which indicators, which, uh, where we are going to focus uh, and how to collect and then analyze and then um, uh, um, add, uh, um, uh, change the things uh, you must change. And now in, in ALPSA, we are going to translate in the association, the Latin Americans Association, we are going to, to we, we have already shared our internal translation, but we are going to translate um, in the committee, the educational committee, the strategy. Great, thank you, Laura. Um, so we have a couple of questions in the, the chat box. I'm gonna start with one from Karen Jones, um, which talks about recommendation number four about appropriate facilities. Um, and also that links to a comment I see from Andy Moore, which talks and acknowledges that actually more and more we're going to be doing our conservation education outside of uh, the, you know, the traditional visitors. So Nicola, um, I'm glad you rejoined us. We lost you there for a second. Um, but I wanted you just to briefly chatter about um, how appropriate facilities have changed in the last year for you. Um, and you've done some uh, really great work with that online virtual facilities and learning. So do you want to briefly just chat us through um, when we say appropriate facilities for the kind of, I guess, the last year in COVID space, what have you done in, um, there? Yes, yes, yeah, sorry, I disappeared. Um, just internet went, so Peru it works, Plymouth it doesn't. Um, anyway, uh, yes, so I think one of the greatest things that we have as conservation educators is our adaptability. So yes, the last year has been absolutely frightening and awful and difficult, but we still wanted to reach out to people. So um, with very, very little investment, um, a gimbal, um, which was £80, and one of our team's mobile phones, we tried um, to do a Facebook Live, and we hit that um, just at the right moment when the world was desperate to see animals and do something. And our it just went absolutely crazy, really. So over, over a million and a half million minutes, of our footage has been watched on YouTube and on Facebook um, in terms of the public and people tuning in from home. Um, and then with that same very basic equipment, we um, did the same for schools and we adapted our lessons so that schools can, can beam in um, from their classrooms. Um, and, you know, it's I'm really proud of my team for being brave and just going for it and 
and practicing talking to each other on a on a small screen. Um, but a lot of trial and error, you know, test. You've got to get some sort of friendly teachers if, in terms of schools in your hood so that you can test things for free on them. And then if you do need to charge, at least you've got that. You know, you've got you've got it right there. But yeah. I do I do think you know in the next ten years, I completely agree. We we have done a lot of expansion. We we had some sort of pilot. Um, test cases of having one of our team based in Wales and one in Newcastle that didn't quite work they were they were a bit too far away really um, but we definitely do much more outreach around Plymouth and the southwest and then I think digital in the next 10 years um, mm. it, that will help with with the equity uh, of access to zoos and aquariums if if somebody's got a phone and an internet connection then we um, should be um, helping people to see what what amazing yeah. animals that we have in our collections thanks nicola and it was really interesting um kind of finishing up the strategy during the last year because we actually changed uh, you know embedded online and are kind of adapting what we meant by facilities in in live time because we were we were adapting as we were going so um we are um running out of time great conversations we've got a couple more questions that i think we can answer in our time um the first one is from Ifantus, um, and uh, this is for Judy, uh, just to give you a heads up. Um, so his question is, um, what uh, support can we get remotely um, with our conservation education strategy? So he says we have the program outline, the activities mission, and I like this phrase, but it needs some panel beating to get it in line with the IZD strategy. So what, what help can we, um, as the IZD community and the IZD board, give people like a Fantas? Oh, Fantas, that's a, that's a great question. And that's something that we grappled with when we wrote the strategy. We said, well, it's all very well producing a strategy, but how can we help people to really use it? Because we want it to be a living document. Um, we're doing this series of webinars. So this is just the first one. We'll be unpacking the strategy through the year. So you will have the opportunity to attend all of the webinars and to actually unpack the strategy with us step by step. And that'll be done exactly as we've done this one. So we'll get people from big places, from small places, from professionals to maybe less professionals. And each time we're going to hear from people who've unpacked the strategy themselves. What were their challenges? What worked for them? What was what was really brilliant? What was so difficult? And, and from that, we're all learning exactly as we have from our two great panelists today. So that'll happen through, through this year. And then if you feel like you need a little bit more help, you can reach out to any of us. I know people have reached out to Sarah, people have reached out to me, and I know that our panelists will be happy to help. So we really are an amazing community. I think that the IZD community is one of the most giving communities I know. And all of us will be happy to help you. So just reach out. If you've got a problem, reach out and we can help you. But please come to all of the webinars because that's a wonderful way to find out who's doing what. Thank you so much, Judy. Um, okay, um, we do have a couple more questions, but we also have a poll and a video to, to see before the end. What I would like from each of our panelists is uh, we know that the majority of our viewers are, you know, they're just about to read the strategy, just about to kind of get started. What is a top tip that you can give them to get on that uh, conservation education strategy journey? So we'll come to you first, Nicola. Just one brief top tip. <laughs> just do it in a comfy setting genuinely get a nice chair a nice drink and just chill with it and just read it absorb it and enjoy it don't look at it like oh my god this is really scary i don't know what to do enjoy it and embrace it <clears throat> thank you so much nicola we'll come to you louder what is a top tip for people getting to grips with the strategy uh, i think to uh, get inside to touch the deep uh, the deep a emotion feeling of life like the d and i that we have that is the same all of the uh, uh, life being i don't know if i am i'm saying mm -hmm. correct but from this go through the organization with this feeling i i i feel that some some people some teams are, are uh, with the infrastructure, with the, the house, with the exhibitions, 
and loss the feeling. So mm -hmm. I, I believe that the most important thing is to reconnect with that feeling that is to support our, our hope and our belief that we can change the, the way human beings are living in our common house, in our beautiful earth. Great, well said, Laura. So I'm just aware of time. Um, so what we're going to do, um, Kim, our technical ways, we're going to move on to our poll, if possible. This is the last poll that we have uh, for this session, and is really just to find out a bit more about um, how we found this session. So for those of you who are watching on our later on our IZD uh, YouTube channel, the first question is how valuable did you find this webinar on your journey um, for the conservation education strategy? The second one asks about um, what would you like to see in future webinars? Did we get it right this time? Would you like to see some different things in there? So pop your answer in. Um, and if you're not an IZD member, would you join IZD to gain access to more of these webinars? So those are the three questions that we like to answer. Um, we'll just give you a minute to do that. There you go, perfect example. Just not a lovely, simple little bit of evaluation there. Also, just um, to your last question, Sarah, a good idea is to read it not like a novel, but more like a magazine, and you dip in and out. Mm. You don't have to read the whole thing cover to cover. Yeah. Okay, so let's see if we can see the answer from the poll. Oh, okay, so the answer for the, the first question, which was most popular, it was 54% uh, said very, very valuable. So that's great to hear. Um, the second uh, question saying, what would you like to hear in future more case studies? So 43% would like to hear more from our, our membership. Um, and if you're not an IZD member, would you join IZD to gain access to more um, webinars? And um, we've got 78% saying I'm already a member. So there are three really useful questions that we need to, to, um, to know about so we can start planning our future webinars. The next webinar will be on chapter two. That will be coming up in the next month. So do keep an eye out for that on social media and in the emails. Before we finish, um, we have a quick video from uh, Frances um, and she is just going to talk a bit about the benefits of being an IZD member. Enjoyed the IZD webinar? Looking for more professional development and networking opportunities with fellow educators from across the globe? Why not grab the chance and join the IZD now? Found in 1972, our vision is to conserve global biodiversity through effective zoo and aquarium programs. With our worldwide members' continuous effort, we conserve biodiversity through encouraging sustainable behaviors in people that visit zoos and aquariums. The International Zoo Educators Association offers three types of membership with a wide range of professional development programs and events for capacity building information and resources and networking opportunities for educators and professionals at only 20 US dollar a year for category 1 associate member do not miss our upcoming events webinars and conference be part of the community join us now fantastic thanks so much francis it was about three o'clock in the morning in hong kong so she quite wisely uh, put that in a video we are done with our first webinar. Um, thank you so much for participating, for, for listening. Um, yes, this will be available. Um, the recording will be on our IZD YouTube channel. We have a few questions asking for presentations and we'll try and get those to you in a, a suitable way. Um, thanks to our panelists, great selection of speakers and thanks for taking part and, and uh, enjoy the rest of your morning, afternoon and evening. Thank you so much. <laughs>